started. I did some research and the consensus seems to be that this started with some high school students in California in the early 70s. They would meet after school at 420 and do what everybody did here today and of course smoke marijuana. And from there the time was time was used as code for smoking pot and the rest they say is history. All right, a little history lesson. Thanks, Jeff. CTV's Jeff Keel is reporting. A history tonight. lesson is three minutes on Google. Mm. You know, yeah. Do their thing. We got Kim on Skype soon. Is she coming up? Yeah, in one minute. Is she, com is she on there? Yeah, one minute. Awesome, buddy. <laughs> I mean, all it takes is the planning of one seed. That's how Young and Dundas Square started. I mean, there was just like me, Goodwin, and Davin. And the first time, a couple other people, but... I think we had 30, 40 people at our first Toronto rally. And now we're like, holy shit. 20,000 people. Want to see the Bob Irv video quickly or something? No, Just I want to talk content? to Kim. Okay. Give me a second. Now right, bring Kim up. Kim is uh, an organizer in Yukon, which is in the Northwest Territory. Smashy, it's, it's way out there. It's surrounded by ice. Way north and west. All right, dump that and we'll put some more in the volcano. So we're going to bring Kim on here. So last year on 420, she was the only protester at the Yukon. Protesting up there with a sign. Prohibition. That's fucking balls, man. That takes courage. So this year, how many posters we send, Kim? Good ones. Did you send her 500? 500, yeah. <laughs> That's like enough for every wow. man, woman, and child in that she province. Can't, she, we Good. can't hear her see her yet. Hold on one second, Kim. All right, we'll get it going. There's no ball. Just put more in there. There's wheat there. There she is. Oh. Kim, what what encouraged, what got you started on, on doing a protest in the Yukon on April 20th? Well, uh, it's Northwest Territories, Yukon, just to oh. say. Well, I don't know geography. <laughs> right. That's right. I love you. It's no worries. Okay, hon. Sorry. So, basically, last year, on Thursday night, on April 19th, my renewed license came in, dated renewal date April 20th. I was like, well, shit, how can I not do something about this, right? So the next morning, my husband um, toddled off down to Staples and got all the supplies we needed, and we put my sign together. They dropped me off downtown, and I wandered around by myself for three hours with my sign. And I had lots of people tooting horns and uh, shout and shouting at me. So I guess it was a it was a, a hit. <laughs> that was incredible. Just you protesting. Now this year, did you receive the 500 posters? that we sent you? Yes, yeah, I have the posters. I'm actually not, I'm not in town right now, but I will be tomorrow, and the posters are going up as soon as I get there. That's, a, what do you think of that? How, how many people do you think this year, like, the response is gonna be like when you put 500 posters up in your community? <laughs> I know, I know. Well, you know, I'm she's laughing too. a few more people. People know me now around town. Like, after I did 420 by myself, I actually had about a dozen people, and I did the Global Marijuana March last year too. And so people are starting to know who I am and remember me. So, um, and I'm, I'm approaching it a bit different this year. I'm actually approaching it from the aspect of, I'm trying to pull people out. It's time for people to come out of the closet. You don't have to come out and admit that you smoke weed. You just need to come out and say that this prohibition is stupid and it needs to end and you support that end. You don't have to say anything else and that's sort of how I'm, I'm pinning it. Because it's a really small government based town and people are really scared to come out and say what they think. So I'm trying to give them an avenue to, to ease them out. That, that's that's a good plan, actually. Get him out of the cannabis closet. Come on, this will be the year to come out of the cannabis closet in the exactly. in yellow knife. Every time I think a yellow knife smash, I think a hot knife. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I just want to say thank you for your courage. It takes a lot of um, a lot of big balls to go out there and put yourself out there. So thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. That's some serious courage. Um, how many like? If you get 30 people protesting this year, that would be a huge success, correct? 
I, 30 people is just, yeah, beyond my imagination. If I have a dozen, I'll be happy. But I, I think I think it's going to be a good turnout this year. Um, I'm pitching it as, as also a community family event. Like, my kids are going to come for the beginning of it and everything. So it should it should be a good time. My husband, my husband's considering petitioning Yellowknife to change the name to Hot Knife just for you. I just wanted you to know. <laughs> I'd like to go visit Hot Knife this summer when we go to Terrace, B.C. Might in- increase tourism. It might. These efforts <laughs> definitely increase tourism. Of a certain aspect, anyways. Yeah. That would be awesome, Matt. I'd love to see you come up. I, I'll get a whole group to come, and I'll give you guys a tour. It would be, it would be wicked. Another question now. You, did you not appear on the front page of your newspaper for doing this protest? Yes, I did, actually. Um, the reporter, uh, well, I was downtown for three hours, and, you know, when you walk the main street, you pass all the buildings, and word spread pretty quickly. Apparently, there were people who had binoculars up on, like, the fourth floor government building where I used to work, and they were watching me <laughs> walk up and down the street. Anyways, so, yeah, so the reporter came out, and he, uh, and he said, oh, well, we're just going to do this interview, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure where it's going to be at in the paper, you know, it might be, it might be in next week's paper or whatever, and it turned out a few days later, yeah, it was the front page, and, and then there was a huge article inside as well, I was, I was not expecting that at all. Next week's paper, not tomorrow's. Or well, they they have a. It's probably a, yeah. Weekly. Yeah. Yeah, we only have um we only have two city newspapers every week. So <laughs> because that happened on a Friday, it wouldn't come out until next Wednesday's paper. Oh, I see. I see now. Either way, that's exciting front page. That's amazing. Did you get like when you were in line at Tim Hortons that day? Did other people like go, hey, you're the pot person? You know, sort of, yeah. I actually, uh, Tim Hortons was not on the walking route. We do have one, but it wasn't in on my route. But, but I did stop in at one of the other coffee shops in town, and, and I just sort of perched my sign at the front of the store next to the banking machine they have there and went in and got my coffee and then did the rest of my march with, you know, my warm coffee. And, uh, yeah, it was it was interesting. The police did follow me around for about the first hour, though, it, and so did my husband and one <laughs> of my children who wasn't in school. They followed me around for the first hour and made sure I was all good, so. <laughs> but um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you said you have a Health Canada medical marijuana license? Yes, that's correct. I do. So, I mean, the real courage, I mean, uh, you could have just walked around with and, and medicated right on the spot there. I could have, yeah. I, I chose not to, simply because if I had been in a bigger city, maybe I would have, but in Yellowknife, uh, it's pretty small and you got to be careful. This isn't a town that you can protest in a cloud of smoke. This is a town where you can protest in a, a wave of signs, pretty much. <laughs> hmm. Well, no, I want to come down there and smoke some weed somewhere outside. And... <laughs> I'm going to do a couple that, hot that, knives. Totally Goodwins and I will do some hot knives and yellow knife. Just like <laughs> on the ruffle be- some feathers and then leave. On the legislature <laughs> ground. <laughs> Why not? Heck, if, we, awesome. if it ends up real bad, we might not be able to leave, but usually we just get <laughs> run out of town. There you go, yeah. I, I can facilitate that, no problem. <laughs> um, so you are you got good media. You have a... You have what do you you got enough posters pretty much now to last you a decade then? If, how yeah, are you gonna put up five hundred posters? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm thinking they're gonna last for a while. I, I, yeah, I guess it'll it'll be a different day next year. We can't I reuse. I think it's about two hundred and fifty posters and two hundred and fifty handbills, but uh. exactly, yeah. But it's definitely going to make my point if I if I manage to get all of them up. Um, I I'd say it's gonna make my point. I think that's going to be amazing that even though you might just you say you'll get a dozen if you can get those posters and handbills out the message you 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 know you realize you're putting hot knife on the map. <laughs> yeah, I guess I am at that. Well, that's good. It needs to be. It needs to be uh, it needs to be given a spotlight. Who's your minister? Who's your MP out there? Uh Dennis Bevington. He's uh NDP. Oh, well, okay. You're in all right. You're in all right, your right territory then. Yeah, yeah, and he's been in. He's been in. Oh, uh, I think three, three terms now, maybe two or three. He's been in for a while, anyways. So, 
Um, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to uh, cross paths and uh, sit down with him in his office sometime soon. That would be wonderful. What's, yeah. What's the cannabis? Uh, what? What? How, is, is cannabis easy to come by in uh, Yellowknife? Is it cheap? It's got to be cheap I, up I there, right? I have a designated right? grower, and I have it worked out with my designated grower, and so I oh. don't even have to worry about entering into the market in Yellowknife at all. Nice. So you're unaware yes. of what's going on out there. I wonder. Mm-hmm. Wonder what the weed price is. Good. Good ones. What do you think? It's ex- expensive, eh? Are the munchies expensive? Like Oreo <laughs> cookies? Yeah. Eggs? Yeah. yeah. They're they're a little more expensive, and your selection is much smaller. You know, like um, Are there we don't have chips? a lot of not a lot of restaurants, right? What about chips? You get a lot of like Lay's and Hostess. You get a lot of chip variety. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Not as not as many as you though. Like we don't get all the newest things. They work their way up, but it's usually a little way a little while after. You know what an iPhone is? <laughs> Start out. <laughs> I oh, just work. But and there's a phrase there's a phrase in Yellowknife okay. and it's called down south. And so what you have to understand is that anyone who comes from north North of the border, north of the 60th parallel, I guess is is what they say. Um, <laughs> anything way down the fuck south up there, by the is way. like is the rest of Canada, whereas most people would think it's someplace else. So if you say, "Oh yeah, I'm going down south," generally just means you're going to Edmonton. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that's way up north for us. <laughs> I don't know if Yellowknife be able to handle me. Some guy sort of slicker Toronto. <laughs> Toronto. <laughs> Toronto, yeah, uh, it's pretty eclectic. You might find you might find a few people to fit in with. Can can How's you Toronto's see the reputation in Yellowknife? What? <laughs> How is Toronto's reputation in Yellowknife? Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, Yellowknife's pretty laid back in most cases, so you know. Can you name the mayor of Toronto? Oh, <laughs> uh, um, Ford. Oh my uh, God. Okay. I can picture his face. I've seen it. I wow, saw it in the news when he was driving and reading his little thingy. I remember that. Yeah, I can picture his face. Craziness. Craziness. So Yellowknife protesting. So this is your second year going out there with your sign. And you're encouraging others to go out and protest with you. Uh, we hear there's 30 people on your Facebook page. Yeah, yeah, I think there's around 30 people who said they were coming. Though I think only a certain portion of them are actually from Yellowknife. So a lot of them are, like, coming, you know, in spirit, like, even though they live in Brazil or whatever, right? Yeah, so, I'm going. Yeah, I, you're, and you're going, too, and so, you know, that's all cool. But but I thought I was going I was going to Hot Knife. Well. <laughs> I was like, Hot <laughs> Knife, I'm Yellow freaking knife, right? there. <laughs> you know, you just put the butter on there, and we just... Psh- Heat up the other knife and you bam, hot knife it. <laughs> we all understand. I just think we're classier. <laughs> no, no, not when we're in yellow knife. <laughs> <laughs> we can throw all that out the it's window. It's not Fort McMurray. <laughs> not, I don't even know where that is. <laughs> Too funny. So yeah, so I'm hoping for a good turnout this year. I think we're gonna have some. I think we'll have a good show. I'm. Uh, I'm I'm enlisting as many people as I can to help me make cookies because uh-huh. I'm going to make it. not actual, like not actual medicated cookies, but they're going to be marijuana leaf shaped cookies. Oh, that's for, awesome! Yeah, right. so I'm going to try and make like you know a hundred of them in hopes that I get fifty people who want two cookies each, or you know a hundred people who want one cookie each. That's my theory. I'm pushing awesome. cookies this year. Pushing the cookie. Come out to the rallies. <laughs> we have cookies. Come out to that. Makes sense to me. Please take some pictures on the day. Yeah, please make a YouTube video of your actions up there. I will. I'm going to see if I can get some uh, some filmographers in town who are interested <laughs> to do some. Otherwise, I'm I was going to see if I could even uh, stream in something, but I don't know. I don't not quite sure what the hookup's going to be. But I'll definitely get some video done and and we'll get it on for sure. Thank you. Yellow knife. Four. Tw- Part of the 420, you're part of the 420 national scene. The biggest. Yes. 
Because and I'm so I'm so impressed. And I I mean Bob Earp is like just amazing. I hope if I ever meet the guy, I'm gonna give him the biggest hug ever because. Like last year, it was me and my sign. The Global Marijuana March was me out of the hatchback of my car in a parking lot. So, you know... If this, this woman year, can I'm do it, any tent, fucking person in this room can do it. This it's, is amazing. We are so happy to be able to send those. Bobber made it possible for you that, uh, you know, Yellowknife is going to be put on the weed map because of you. And Kim, you've done an amazing really job you really impressed us here down in toronto at vapor central 667 young street we we're really happy to see you know when, when chris goodwin's like there's a rally in yellow knife i'm sending posters there we were really happy for you <laughs> awesome no, I don't thanks think we're on. thanks so much and thanks for having me on this has been a total treat so uh, ah, you guys welcome. have have an awesome night and uh, hopefully i'll talk to you before the rallies we're looking forward to it have a great Good. night, Kim. Take care. So, the story is the story behind how did we get the stage and how we greased them, right? Like, we gave them shit ton of cash. We showed up with a greasy bag of, of, of cash, unmarked uh, bills, some filthy lucre, unmarked bills, and we just gave it to them under the table, like, and then they, they said, You guys can have the stage.